I'm so excited to uh, have uh, with me, well, I'm going to butcher your name, so you go ahead and say your name for me. Um, thank you for meeting with me today. I, I normally would say your name, but I, I just, I've been practicing it and I'm, I'm not that good at it. So, um, but you're with a, a company that you founded called uh, Soli System and you're in the Netherlands. First of all, tell me a little bit about this product because it really caught my attention. It's, it's a product for kids and it involves a robot that eats the sun. Tell me about that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a product that we made to teach children about sustainability at a very young age. So it needs to be fun, it needs to be engaging, it needs to teach something. And I have him right here. His name is uh, Soli. Hey, the Soli. Sun. There he is. There he is. And uh, he opens up his mouth to show the solar panels and uh, eats the solar rays. And then with the LEDs on the side, he actually shows how well he's doing. So kids get direct feedback and they can just go outside, try, it, try out different locations, different positions, uh, and just find out what works best to, uh, yeah, to eat solar rays. So tell me about this. So inside the robot, is there a battery that's storing the energy? No, no. We actually have like a, a separate battery belly that you can click on uh, at, the, at the bottom. Oh, okay. And then every time he eats something, it goes into his belly. And he can actually share his belly with his friend. Uh, that's this one. It's called uh, Letty. It's the illuminating robot. Uh, and I can also use just a normal USB battery because it all works with uh, USB. Okay. So I can, uh, I can show you how it works. This one gets all the colors, so you can use the, the different buttons to mix and match the colors to what you want. Oh, that's neat. Oh, so it's really tactile, it's re so kids can really, you know, dial in and play with it. Yeah, yeah, it's really for the small children, so it needs to be like, yeah, big and yeah, really tangible. So what age is this for? What, what age range is it for? Well, uh, Soli is part of an educational system which actually goes the entire elementary school, so from 4 to 12 and even later. We have some stuff that I'll show later for older kids. And this, yeah, we started with four years four years old. So they just go outside and we have some very, very basic questions like, okay, try this out at the schoolyard, uh, climb into trees or whatever and, and try it out and, uh, and see what happens. And the cool part is Soli actually remembers uh, how much he is eating and at what time and he sends that to the internet. So all the kids can actually log in and just uh, see all the data, uh, and they can also earn Soli tokens. So if they have, if they uh, yeah got a lot of solar energy from Soli, they can get tokens which they can use to buy stuff in the Soli game. Oh, that's so cool! So it's all integrated between the the actual physical robot that they can manipulate, and then the the game, and then the internet. So tell me about this: Is it Wi-Fi connected? Is that how it's always talking to the internet? Yeah, it's Wi-Fi connected, so we have uh, like a different Wi-Fi stick that you need to connect to Soli because Wi-Fi actually takes a lot of energy. Uh, people don't realize it, but it's uh, yeah, it's way more than Bluetooth, for example. So we have this different stick that has also a different battery in it uh, that you can connect to Soli, and then he uh, actually transfers all the data. So he um, remembers locally, and then he can send it to the internet later. Oh, so that's kind of for a little bit older kids maybe that want to see the data and so forth. Oh, that's really interesting. So you can do a whole lesson plans about the sun and the movement of the sun and things like that. Yeah, yeah, true. So what we, what we do in the workshop, because we do a lot of workshops at locations, also just at events, also at schools, and we have like uh, a couple of um, assignments that go a bit deeper. So what would you do if you could not touch Shirley all day long and he needs to, you know, collect uh, solar power all day long? So they have to think about what the sun will do, uh, and then you can also connect several solis together. So you can make like your small energy grid, uh, and there's also some assignments with that. So that, that really takes it to a next level. And then there's also the, like the digital part. This is so exciting. So when did you get this idea to start this this project, this company? Yeah, well, the, the project started when I uh, uh, was doing my graduation at the uh, university, uh, industrial design. Uh, I, I could make up my own project and I, I noticed that my sister has like small kids and I noticed that I was trying to, you know, teach them a bit about sustainability and about not leaving the lights on and stuff like that. But of course, for my sister, she was really busy and uh, yeah, she's not really that green minded uh, as I am. So uh, she was like, she didn't do that. And I, I was like, I think we're missing a, an opportunity here. Because if you want to change behavior uh, in adults, it's really, really hard. And then I thought, why don't we teach it the right way at a young age so we don't have all the hassle later. So now, is this an actual company? I mean, you started it as a school project, but then yeah. when did when did you form it as a company? Well, I formed my own design studio almost instantaneously when I 
uh, was done with the university. And then at some point we actually made like Sully Systems uh, Incorporated, I guess. Yeah, I think it's now three years old. And we, we started out at the Sully and we're having yeah, a lot of other products because we noticed that we were making it for schools. And they said, okay, small children, nah, that, that's okay, but we don't really have any money for that because they, yeah, you know, you can give them some blocks and they're happy too. And uh, so they asked us like, okay, we need, we need this to, to go further, to go to a, like an older uh, uh, target group. And then we made the, the Build Your Own Robot Kit. I have one right here. Yeah, oh, do you have one? Oh, awesome. It's like our, uh, our example robot. So it has a little motor in his, in his neck, you turn around, and all the uh, parts need to be connected to, uh, all the parts that actually move need to be connected to sensors. So at this case, I have like a little button over here, and I can turn it and I can make it stop, and make it go slowly and go fast. And the other side is actually even cooler because it's, I have a distance sensor over here and I have like a servo motor over here. So when I come closer, these are connected, it will come to me. Awesome. I can actually give it like a box. <laughs> That's okay. great. Kids must love this. Yeah, yeah, and I'm amazed all the time at what they build because we just throw in the cardboard and, and, and all kinds of stuff we have laying at the office because, you know, otherwise you just throw it in the trash. And, uh, and we take it to the workshops and they just build new stuff. In. That's so cool. And so you were hearing from schools that basically they have limited budgets, which is always a challenge, um, and they're very interested in technology, but they're not so interested in sustainability, which... I guess it's sad, but it makes sense, right? That they're, they're told like, technology, teach them that. You found a way to sneak in the sustainability part, which is such a great way to do it. Yeah, yeah, and they also, because of like the budgets, they like it because all the parts, uh, the electronics you buy from us, but then you just use whatever you have lying, lying around. So it's even like a win-win in the budget part. Now tell me, when you started the company, it was probably just you and, what, a friend or two? Yeah, uh, the thing is, I have a friend who actually started his own company with some other guys, uh, an engineering firm. And the first big assignment that uh, he had with his firm was for me, because I got a subsidy. And I uh, kind of hired him to make it really happen, to make a real solid, because I had like a lot of ideas, I had some prototypes, but really hard to make. Uh, and eventually they um, made it in such a way that we can produce them and we can you know, put them in the schools or use them for workshops. So, and eventually they as a company got 25% uh, of my company. So now we're like working together all the time. Oh, awesome. So go back for a second. So you said that you got a subsidy. Is that a, a like a government uh, grant program or something? Yeah. And that was enough money to kind of get the idea off the ground? Yeah, yeah, to get it off the ground. And then, you know, you, you always need more actually you know because you're like okay uh, if we have this oh this seems like so much money and sure we're gonna make it and then at the end like mm, okay we need more <laughs> right i'm out of money that's such an important point because so many people around the world are like you know government should be as lean as possible it should be as small as possible but what they forget is that if you plant the seed if you if you have those grants for small companies and good ideas it's going to enable companies like yours to to grow um, because without that it probably would have been almost impossible for you to start. Yeah, or I had to take a, a big risk, which in the end I think would have really backfired because we didn't know how hard the educational market was going to be. And even people were telling it, but we were like, oh, we're going to disrupt this market. And, you know, we have, we have better stuff. We have, like, physical stuff. We also have lessons that they're used to, and we're going to, you know, blow them all away. Um, but, yeah, it's really hard because they, the teachers are drowning in work and they don't want any, anything new and they're totally not technical. So if you just say, okay, I've, I've got a robot, even if you said a, a playful robot, a play robot, or whatever you want to call it, it's just like, oh, robot, oh, I'm not going to do that because it's, it's technology. So it's really, really hard. And that's why I'm really happy that like the Build Your Own Robot Kit is actually also for consumers available because that just really widens the horizon. Talk to me about, um, so outside of the schools, now you've got the bigger, you've got the whole world as your possible consumers yeah. here, right? Um, so if I'm a parent or an uncle and I want to get something for my niece or nephew, let's say, or my kids, can I go to your website and purchase like one of your robot kits? Uh, it depends on where you live. If you live in Europe, you can. It's uh, bjor.eu. Uh, and if for the United States, we're actually still looking for distributors. We can just buy it in bulk and then distribute it over there because if we have to send it like every package all the way, it's going to be way too expensive. Right. And actually for the kids, we're thinking about maybe doing like the craft kits, we're doing maybe a crowdfunding to 
get it off the ground and to uh, make it in, in bigger numbers and make it cheaper and so this is so exciting i'm i really i'm excited about your product and your ideas because i really feel like this is something that kids um, they need to be doing more tactile learning. They need to be putting things together and working with friends and seeing how things work. And and all of those lessons are so important. And I think we've forgotten that in most of our schools now. We we you know we stand at the board and we tell them a lesson and we tell them to remember this and then we give them a test. But they aren't learning the super important social skills and hands-on skills that they need. And I, I just love to see these kinds of of, of robots and solely because they're 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 getting all of those in in the same place um, and it's just such a wonderful idea yeah thanks yeah yeah for me it's also uh, the teachers also need to make like a, a development in that they are still doing it that way you know? they're teaching it with the board and I think here there's some digital stuff going on so they, at some schools they all have tablets but then they're doing the math on the tablet so that the teacher doesn't have to you know check it all some people even think it's a bad thing because you know they're even more at the screen yeah you notice that they they, they got the social stuff going on they need to work together they need to uh, what we do is actually we have a, like a design process that we um, have kids do when they're built on robot so they have to brainstorm, they have to uh, uh, give feedback to other robots from other groups. Well, and right there, you just said the word that's so important that's missing from education today, which is brainstorming, imagination. Now, the kids, yeah. you know, they're just so used to being told what to do, and then they regurgitate it. But making a robot from scratch, and I mean, you even pointed this out, they get a kit, and then they have to add things to it and use their imagination. And it is yeah. scary in the beginning. A lot of kids are scared. They're like, I don't know what you want me to do. But that's the great part. It opens them up to being like, you can go whatever direction you want with this, you know? Yeah. That's so really fun to see. Have you found that once you can finally get into a school, that more teachers in that school begin to um, use your, your products in their classroom? Did, does it start to spread? With the Soli, we didn't really notice that because it's it's a big box and there's, they're still scared of it. Um, but with the Bjor kit, we did because it's like a, a small box with the small parts. And what we noticed is that at first, like the technology person, if there is a technology person, he's interested. And then when you're in the meeting or when you see it working, you get like the, the person that does uh, art and says, okay, but this is really, really simple. I can just, you know, click, 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 and it responds. I can just add it to my artwork also. And I'm like, yeah, sure. They make an interactive art piece. It's super. They just have to see how simple it is. And then they're like, okay, I can see it's technology. It's so simple that, you know, it's not scary or we can do whatever we want. With it. I would love it if um, at some point down the road, if you do make it over to the United States with your product, um, I would love to, to check it out and to start spreading it here because I think it's a wonderful idea. It needs to be spread around the world. Nice. Yeah, uh, sure. I'll, I can send you a kit right now if you want. Oh, that'd be, that would be fantastic. I would love yeah. to see it firsthand and like bring it into schools and stuff. I think that would be so great. It's super cool what they make. Sometimes they just surprise, totally surprise me. Like, oh, wait, of course you could do that. I haven't even thought about it. And then we, we had one kid that just made like a, an axle that could move around. So he, he made like a little driving robot and he could actually steer it. And we, we, also, we never did that. We just made two motors and then if one motor goes faster, it steers. So you're using some of the new tools that are out there, right? So you're using laser cutters, you're using, I assume, like maybe 3D printers. Tell me about that. Is I mean, this is probably something you couldn't be doing like 10 or 20 years ago, right? No, 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 definitely not. We have, like, we have two 3D printers here and they're almost on continuously because we built these small parts. This one has like, this is 3D printed, so the arm. Mm -hmm. uh, and all the, like the motors all have really small 3D printed parts put on top because otherwise you cannot really build it cardboard anymore. You have to build it directly onto the motor's axle and it's really small and we tried it in the beginning but kids are like uh, some more duct tape and eventually it doesn't work anymore. Right. So we just made it easier. So we talked about before that, you know, a few years ago, this wouldn't have been possible. I mean, you're using a little, it looks like a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino there. Um, and they've gotten so cheap that you can actually do this now. And then tell me about all these other parts here. Yeah, it's a, you're right. This is an Arduino. So it's an Arduino with a yeah, board put on, on top of it to make it really simple. And it just uses uh, regular uh, jack cables. Oh, cool. So Easy to use. Really simple. You can't do it wrong. And once you attach it, the, um, yeah, you have to hold the, the left, for me left, your right part, uh, is the, the green parts, they're the, the actuators, so there's motors, buzzers, LED. Mm -hmm. On the other side, there's the sensors, and they will respond to one another. So if I come closer, you will see this part starts oh, to move. cool. 
and I can just mix and match it all. So I can just go, okay, let's, let's use different motor. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Goes like that. And then at the other side, you can do the same. So this is just a regular. Uh, I want one of these. Really right now. You know, everyone here in the studio that's been watching this interview has said the same thing. Like, th these are big big kids here in this in the studio and they're all like i want one of these like i think this is ageless this is timeless it's super simple because it's color coded and you can make like six of these connections and then the next part is just building it in and this is wood that you can use cardboard you can use plastic bottles or uh, whatever that's so great it's using your imagination and it's in its problem solving and it's engineering it's everything in one place it's so awesome it just starts exciting this part of your brain that needs to be excited. You know, so many kids go to school and they're like, I don't like school. And I don't blame them because they go to school and it's just boring crap that, you know, but this is like wherever you want to go with it. Like you just said, there's a little kid who taught you something. Like that's so great. So you're basically looking for people like in the United States who could make your product here and ship it from here, right? To keep the cost down. Yeah, or just like uh, buy it from us in bulk and then distribute it. So right, we don't. We're talking to tens of thousands of people here right now. So, I mean, if, you, if you're like, this is a great idea. I could, I'd love to get into this business. You know who to contact because that's how this works. This is a community of people. And I would love to see that your ideas spread all around the world to different places because I think this is universal. Kids everywhere would love this. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, it's it's, the, it's uh, the grand plan, grand plan to uh, to get it uh, worldwide. All right. Well, we got lots of European viewers, so get out there if you're a parent, if you're a teacher, and check out their website. Contact them. Get these kits into your kids' hands because this is important stuff. Thanks so much for watching. Now you know we work hard to bring you videos about things that we think you'll find useful, but we need to know from you what you want to see. So leave your comments below. Also, don't forget to go over to our Patreon page, where for as little as a buck a month, you can watch our Patreon bonus story every week on Tesla Time News. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.